Now, for the sliding filament theory of muscular contraction, there are five phases. That's important to remember. There's five phases. The first phase is the resting phase. The second phase is the excitation contraction coupling phase. The third phase is the contraction phase. The fourth phase is the recharge phase. And the final fifth phase is the relaxation phase. Now I'm going to break down these phases. So the first phase again is the resting phase. And in the resting phase, the muscle is not being stimulated by the motor neuron, so the muscle is at rest. So when the muscle is at rest, these two structures here, the actin filament, which has troponin and tropomyosin attached to it, it's not going to be binding with the myosin globular heads in the first phase, the resting phase. The muscle is at rest. In the second phase, the excitation contraction coupling phase, calcium is released into the myofibril. Calcium attaches to troponin, which causes the shifting of tropomyosin and exposing the active binding sites on the actin molecule. Myosin cross bridge heads attach to actin filaments. In this picture here, we're still on the second phase, the excitation contraction coupling phase. A nerve signal is going to travel down the nerve fiber. It's going to stimulate the, or excite the sarcolemma. And again, the sarcolemma is the plasma membrane of the skeletal muscle tissue or the cell membrane of skeletal muscle tissue. And the cell membrane, or sarcolemma, is a semi-permeable microscopic membrane of lipids and proteins that provides a protective barrier between the interior of the cell and the extracellular fluid. The major functions of the cell membrane, or sarcolemma, are to regulate the passage of material into and out of the cell and enclose the components of the cell. So once the sarcolemma is excited, Action potentials are going to travel down the T-tubules. And review of what T-tubules are. The T-tubules are continuous with the sarcolemma at the surface of the cell. And the function of the T-tubules is to carry an electrical nerve impulse or action potential from the surface of the cell to the interior of the cell when the cell is stimulated. So that action potential is going to travel down the T-tubules and it's going to cause calcium to be released into the myofibril in this picture here. Now, once calcium is released into the myofibril, calcium attaches to troponin, this structure here, which causes the shifting of tropomyosin and exposing the active binding sites on the actin molecule. So if we look at this, top actin filament here, you can see that the tropomyosin, again the tropomyosin is this red rope-like um, rope structure and it's going to block the active binding sites on the actin filament. So as you can see here, there's very few black dots that's going to represent the active binding sites on the actin molecule in this top picture here. But the second picture, as you can see, once the calcium attaches to troponin, calcium is represented by these blue circles here, once it attaches to the troponin, it's going to cause a shifting of tropomyosin, the red rope-like structure, and it's going to expose the active binding sites, which is represented by these black dots. So as you can see in this bottom picture, there's a lot more of these black dots on the actin molecule exposed compared to this top one here. Now what that does, since these active binding sites are exposed on the actin molecule, now the myosin globular heads or cross bridges can attach to the actin filament. And that leads us to the third phase, 
of the sliding filament theory of muscular contraction, which is the contraction phase. In the contraction phase, myosin cross bridges flex and pull the actin filaments inward over the myosin filaments, which causes the muscle to shorten, contraction. Myosin cross bridges flex by using the energy released by the breakdown or hydrolysis of ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. The energy for muscular contraction comes from the breakdown of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, by the enzyme myosin ATP ACE. So ATP is broken down now into ADP, which stands for adenosine diphosphate, the di meaning there's two phosphate, and PI stands for inorganic phosphate and energy is released as well. So the released energy is used to flex the myosin cross bridges that are attached to actin filaments. Now, ATP is needed for myosin cross bridge flexion. It's also needed for the myosin globular heads to detach from the actin and recock. This picture here shows that ATP is needed for myosin cross bridge flexion and also that another ATP is needed for the myosin to detach from actin and recock. So once the myosin cross bridges flex or pull the actin towards the center of the sarcomere, this head is going to stay bound to the actin molecule unless another ATP comes in and detaches it from the actin molecule. And muscular contraction can be repeated over and over as long as calcium is available to bind to troponin. ATP is available to provide the energy for cross bridge flexion and to detach the myosin from the actin. And myosin ATP ACE is available to break down ATP. Also note that each myosin cross bridge flexion pulling on the actin filament only shortens the muscle fiber by about 1% of its resting length. So the flexion of myosin cross bridges pulling on actin filaments must be repeated over and over again throughout the entire muscle for measurable movement to take place. The fifth and final phase of the sliding filament theory of muscular contraction is the relaxation phase. When the motor neuron stops firing, calcium is removed from the myofibril and pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Remember that the sarcoplasmic reticulum is the storage site for calcium ions in skeletal muscle. This results in tropomyosin moving back to cover and block the active binding sites on actin. Myosin cross bridges can no longer attach to actin and the muscle relaxes and returns to its resting length. This picture here explains the fifth phase, the relaxation phase, and the motor neuron stops firing, so this calcium that was attached to troponin is now going to be pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Since calcium is not binding to troponin, it cannot create the shift in the tropomyosin molecule and expose the active binding sites on the actin molecule. So since the active binding sites are not exposed on the actin molecule, then the myosin cross bridges, they can't attach to the actin molecule and the muscle is going to relax and return to its resting length. That's it for the sliding filament theory of muscular contraction. I hope this helped you guys out some. Feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.